somebody basically brought it to our attention, like, whoa, we don't want people, I mean, it, it was all, it, well, we don't want people like that, and we have a policy against having people that promote violence when it goes beyond self-defense. Hi, everybody. I'm here today with Jody Underwood, who is a member of the Free State Project Board. She is a, a mover. She's there in New Hampshire, and she operates Bardo Farm, which is a really cool place. Um, Jody, how are you today? I am just fine, thank you. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Very glad. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? About myself? <laughs> There's so many different dimensions. What do I talk about? Um, so my husband and I moved to New Hampshire in 2007, so we're going on six years now Wow! for the Free State Project and with another couple. And uh, we bought a large property from which grew Bardo Farm. Mm -hmm. um, and we live off the grid, and we're working towards being self-sufficient. Um, I'm also on the school board in Croydon, New Hampshire, uh -huh. um, and I also work a full-time job. <laughs> oh, you're a busy uh, for person. I, yeah, I telecommute half the time and I travel half the time, so I am quite a busy person. <laughs> yeah, I've always seen uh, Pete Ayer uh, put stuff up on on Facebook about how he was at Bardo Farm and he had a good time. And and you guys have uh, is it called Bardo Fest? Is that what it's called? Yep, that's right. Yeah, and that's that's once a year, right? It is, yep. So We've good stuff. Four. Yep, yep, it's great stuff. Everybody so, has a good time at Bardo Fest. Uh huh. So, um, so recently there was uh, this controversy about Christopher Cantwell and some comments he made about the Bearcat issue, and um, you are a member of the Free State Project board, and you guys decided that he violated the policy on promoting violence and you decided to expel him from from the list of, of participants is that right that's correct okay and so can you tell it give us a little background on the bearcat issue so that that everybody who's who's watching this understands uh, you know what that's all about um so the city of Concord wrote a proposal uh, to get a bear cat for the city and 20 or so surrounding areas in New Hampshire that they would all have use of it. Mm -hmm. And in their proposal to the federal government, they said one of the reasons, and I'm not quoting it, I'm not reading this, but one of the reasons they are justified to have a, a bear cat is because they have, even though they don't have, what, is, what do they call it, like international terrorist problems, they do have the threat of more internal ones, for example, like an, a daily threat, they said, for example, people from the Free State Project, Occupy, and there was one other, I forget, and it was like, wow. <laughs> um, and, that was, and that was our issue with it, was that, I mean, we're not terrorists, right? right. We do not condone violence, we don't promote violence, we do believe in self-defense, but we're not attacking them if that's what they're suggesting. We asked for um, for examples of the, da the daily threats that they have with free staters, and I don't believe we got a response to that, mm -hmm. um, at least not an explicit response. Yeah, I mean, they, they basically, I'm, I'm a Free State Project member as well, and um, they basically called us domestic terrorists, uh, right? Is that's that right? correct. That is what they did. And so Christopher Cantwell, who was also a Free Step Project member, he wrote up an article on his website basically saying that, and it was about the Bearcat issue, and he was saying that, um, you know, the, the most inflammatory part of the article where, where he, he's, was where he said that perhaps the answer is to start shooting um, agents of the state. Is, 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 that, is that the part of it that really... Um, they really kind of uh, crystallized, you know, the need to re to review that to to make it an FSP board issue. Um, right. Um, I don't think he said it quite the way you said it, but that was the feeling behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, and somebody basically brought it to our attention, like, "Whoa, we don't want people." I mean, it, it was all it, well. We don't 
want people like that, and we have a policy against having people that promote violence when it goes beyond self-defense. Mm -hmm. He, so you know, we we presented that idea to him and asked him to remove it or at least you know make it seem more like self-defense, right? I mean, we didn't suggest that, but he could have. Um, and his his response was went down the line of it is self defense and and it's an interesting line right and and for me i had to think about it like where is that line for me and for everybody it's going to be different but on the board we basically came to our conclusion that the 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 policy that we have in place is about more immediate self defense uh -huh. not a, it, I mean, his is more like, I don't know if you can call it long-term self-defense, right? Um, but it's like they steal from us all the time. Therefore, shooting them at any time is justified. I, I mean, I just, it's not my line, even if it is his. It didn't, it didn't really sit well with you guys, that, that idea that, that that would be justified. Is that correct? That's correct. Mm-hmm. So one, one concern I had was that, and I, I confronted Chris about this a few nights ago on, on Mike Shanklin's uh, show, was that here was uh, the FSP trying to, sh to show, to, to get Concord to admit that we are not domestic terrorists, and there was an, a, a huge um, you know, mobilization really going on of people to engage in activism and to, to get Concord uh, PD to admit this and meanwhile here is a Free State Project member saying that perhaps we should be engaging in what is essentially domestic terrorism. Right. So the irony is thick, yes. Yeah, so for me I, I, I wanted to ask Chris why, why would you choose this, and I did ask him, why would you choose this, this issue, the Bearcat, this time when um, you know so many people are in the midst of trying to defend um, ourselves from that to say something like that because to me it's smacks of sabotage that it, it's effectively trying to sabotage the efforts of so many um, people did did that um, thought uh, come up in any of the discussions um, certainly it came up um, in, in, in some sense it's the timing was really bad. Why did he choose that? We never asked him that, though, and it was a good question for you to ask him. Um, yeah, he wouldn't give me an answer, really, as far as I'm concerned. It's, I, I couldn't get an answer from him about that. I, right. I'm not sure that he really thought about it. Huh. He just right responded to the Bearcat thing, and this is what he thought of, and so he wrote it. Hmm. And he, he always claims that he doesn't want to hold back on what he's thinking. Um, and I respect that, and I think he should keep doing that. He just can't do it as part of the FSP. Um, you know, one of our other policies is that we can also remove people from the list if what they're doing is detrimental to the goals of the FSP. Um, and we really did try to do this in a principled and fair way, we're, and mm -hmm. we're still trying to coordinate our policies so that they can continue to be principled and fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, someone asked me a question. They said, well, if it's not cool for Chris Cantwell to say that perhaps we should, uh, you know, engage in self-defense, according to him, according to his definition, by shooting agents of the state at any time that it pleases us, effectively, not, not in his words, but in so many words, then what's the difference between that and people who open carry at Porkfest? What do you have to say about that? I'm sorry. Can you can you repeat that? I was my phone was distracting me for a minute. Sure, sure, no problem. So, um, so the question is, uh, what's the difference between promoting violence the way that Chris Cantwell does it, and the way? Uh, well, I don't think it is, but some people consider that open carrying, perhaps at Porkfest, might be some kind of statement on the use of violence. For you, what is the difference between you know what Chris Cantwell said and people open carrying at Porkfest? Wow, that 
would never occur to me as, as an issue. People have a right to open carry for the purpose of self-defense, mm -hmm. whether it's against some criminal, a bear, or the government coming down on you. Mm -hmm. um, but it is all about self-defense. So, mm -hmm. I, I, why do you think some people think that it, it seems um, aggressive? Well, certainly people who don't understand gun rights think it's aggressive. Yeah, I know. I, I have open carried, and I did it in the Philadelphia area a few years ago uh, for several months. And I know that some people definitely it makes them nervous. Uh, but inside the liberty, libertarian community, I, I, per, I personally found the comparison um, to, be, to not be valid because if you're going to say that uh, open carrying a firearm is uh, promoting violence, then you have to say that it's not a peaceful act. And frankly, um, I think it is a peaceful act to carry a firearm openly as long as you're not using it or, or brandishing it to threaten someone or whatnot. And if we say that it is a violent act or promoting a violent act, well, uh, then we have a new conflict because, um, you know, that, that's pretty much an article of faith in our community, really, at this point. I mean, it's accepted wisdom that uh, open carrying a farm is, is, a, is not a violent act. It's not promoting violence. It is a peaceful act. W would you agree with that? Yeah. I do agree with that, yeah. So... Um, for you, what is do do you what would you say is the difference between uh, your where would you draw the line personally between self def immediate self defense of life and limb and the kind of political violence that um, yeah Chris Cantwell was talking about in his article. What's the difference? Yeah, I mean, where would you draw the line? You know, would you uh, you know? Where where does justified, um, you know, non-aggression principle sanctioned uh, defensive violence end for you uh, personally? Um, I think it ends with the imminent threat to me. If there's no imminent threat then I won't initiate violence. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think that's a solid answer. Um, and there has been a mention that uh, Larkin Rose, who um, is known to also kind of talk about these, these issues, um, you know, when to shoot a police officer or why, um, you know, to, to talk about violence, the talking gave at Porkfest, that someone has complained about him to the Free State Project Board as well. Uh, is it true that someone complained about him or, or that you, you guys are reviewing what he has said to see, um, you know, what your, your, what your stance is going to be on that? Um, yeah, I think it's known that somebody submitted a complaint to us about him. <clears throat> And we have not started to review it yet. Oh, goodness, the board meets quarterly. <laughs> um, and I don't know anything about Larkin Rose, so I can't speak to that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know anything that he's done. I would have to first look into it all. So I, I actually can't even comment on it from that perspective. Okay, fair enough. Um, well, uh, those, those are my questions. Did you have anything you'd like to add uh, before we wrap it up, uh, Jody? Um, I guess I'd like to make a, a statement about what the organization of the Free State Project is and maybe mm -hmm. what it's not also. We've been accused on Facebook so many times in this particular situation of, you know, how dare they do this? They don't represent me. And it's like, no, we, we don't represent anybody, right? The only thing we are is this bus that we're trying to pull this organization together in order to attract people to move in new, move to New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like we're organizing the 20,000 people, right? Once you get here, you do what you do. We would like it to all be peaceful. Um, and... So, I mean, that's, that's all we are. We have policies that we've 
passed and that we support and we try to keep in place and we try to keep to those policies and beyond that we're not like this represent repre I don't even know the right word here uh, a representative organization um, anybody who wants to get involved can it's not like we're exclusive we happen to have a board with this set of members again we've been accused of who puts the people on the board and it's like the people who are interested in actually having the bus operate you know there are doers there are thinkers and then and there are the board members and we all kind of work mm -hmm. together um, so anybody who wants to be a doer can do and then they become known to other people and then they're nominated for the board and the next time somebody cycles out somebody else can move on so it's open we post everything now we just have created a new website where things are better I know I hope you've seen it um, the old one yes. is really hard to find anything yes the new website not, is great it is isn't it but yeah. it's not complete yet and it's still a work in progress and not everything's on there yet but it'll get there so people are like oh where are the policies and it's like you know what I'm sorry it wasn't the first thing we were worried about but we're gonna get there it will all get up there mm -hmm. so um, it's unfortunate that it's not there right now given this situation but um but it will be there Mm -hmm. So that's all I want to say about this. We're, we're just this small group trying to make this thing happen, um, and it's a thankless job, often. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, thanks, uh, Jody Gavins Underwood, a member of the Free State Project board. Also, a uh, she operates uh, the Bardo Farm up there, which is really cool. And uh, I really appreciate, um, you know, that you that you gave me this interview, and um, I, I think it's really good because not not always are are you know members of the Free State uh, Project Board very accessible, and so I think this is a really good um, uh, you know precedent that you're setting here by by participating in an interview like this. Thank you. Thanks for contacting me. Okay, Jody. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. All right. You too. Okay. Bye bye. Get protected today at shieldmutual.com.